Today we're going to talk about fabric shopping with intention. As someone who loves to sew, I know it's super easy to get overwhelmed when you go into a fabric store and just want to buy everything that's pretty. But just because something's pretty doesn't mean it fits in with your personal style. Every time I check out at the fabric store, I see all these customers coming through with so many beautiful fabrics. I've learned to admire fabrics that aren't my personal taste, and I have a process to make sure that it doesn't accidentally come home with me. Now I'm sure you know all about mood boards and I don't need to explain to you how to make a mood board, but that is a good starting place. I'm about to move out of state, which means I'm losing my local fabric store, and honestly, that's gonna be a huge loss. It's an entire warehouse of dead stock fabric at super low prices, and on top of that, because I own a business, I get an extra 20% off everything. Honestly, between the selection and the price, it's super hard to beat, and I knew that since I wasn't gonna have access to it anymore, I wanted to do one last big haul. So knowing this, I went through the patterns that I own and made a list of all the things that I wanna make, the patterns I wanna buy, and the patterns that I wanna self-draft. After that, I went over to Pinterest and I downloaded all the pictures that I thought would be a good fit for the makes that I plan to do. I compiled all this information into a mood board and I use this to guide myself as I purchase fabric. As a general rule of thumb, I don't bring any fabric into my household that doesn't have a specific purpose. So although this is probably the most fabric I've ever purchased at one time, I know that it's all gonna get put to good use and that it's in line with my personal style. Between fabric and notions, I spent a grand total of $227.02. And let me remind you that this fabric comes in at a lower price point than most fabric and I get a 20% off discount, which means I bought a lot of stuff. I have grand plans for my wardrobe and I will be documenting everything here, so please stick around if you feel inclined. I spent a total of seven hours in the fabric store, but to be fair, I was trying to be super thorough since it was the last time I was gonna go to the fabric store, and I also did a bit of chatting with the ladies who work there, because over the past few years, I spent a lot of time in that fabric store, and I didn't want my appreciation to go unnoticed. Overall, it was a super sad day. I mean, I'm super excited for all the fabric I purchased and the projects that are coming up, but saying goodbye to Milland and all the ladies who work there was definitely difficult. But anyways, I'm going to take you along on that fabric journey and then I'm going to show you all the things I purchased and what I plan to make with it. Hey guys, I just pulled up to the fabric store for the very last time and I'm so sad. I'm going to miss all of the people that have helped me here. But yeah, I have a lot of big plans and I want to make sure that I have all of the fabric for my big plans. I made a mood board and everything, but the fabric here is really inexpensive compared to pretty much anywhere else. So I want to make sure that I can pick up as much as possible, but I'm trying to limit myself to only picking up fabric that I know has a specific project in mind because I don't want to just buy things that I think are pretty and then them go to waste in the long run. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're about to go inside. Okay, so remember when I told you I bought a lot of stuff? Yeah, I wasn't joking. I pretty much touched everything in the entire store, didn't have a budget, went in and bought anything that I wanted. With that being said, there was definitely still a plan and I do have projects in mind for every single one of these pieces of fabric. Aside from the sadness of losing my local fabric store and the women who work there, I can't tell you how excited I am about all these projects. We've got denim, trousers, undies, and lots of exciting things. So let's talk about all this fabric. So as previously mentioned, I'm about to move and my sewing space is actually gonna like double in size. Our new rental is gonna be a two bed, two bath, and I managed to convince my partner that I should get the master bedroom. So with that being said, I have a lot of grand plans in mind of what that space is gonna look like. And the first thing is changing up my ironing board situation. I really don't like the ironing board that I have now. It doesn't work as well as I want it to, so I'm revamping the entire ironing station. I purchased an Ikea unit secondhand that I've seen other sewists use as an ironing board, but it's not made to be an ironing board, so I do need to make a mat for it. For the mat, I purchased four different fabrics. First is this heat resistant fabric that's gonna help protect the wood. That's what's gonna go on the bottom layer. I got quilting cotton and interlining, which is gonna be the padding for the interior. And next is this simple twill that I picked up. That's gonna be the top portion that you iron on. I knew the basic pieces that I needed for this mat, but I was definitely guided by one of the employees on which actual fabrics to purchase. Okay, let's move into stretchy material next. The top that I'm currently wearing gets so much wear. It's just a super easy basic that I can throw on with any outfit. And especially during the summer, I can just pop it on with some shorts and be out the door. I also I also work out in this top a lot, so it's very versatile, and I knew that I wanted to make more of them. Although I generally don't have a ton of color in my wardrobe, since this top is so basic, I feel like it'd be a good way to introduce color without clashing with my other pieces. I got this really nice hunter green stretchy material, this lovely cobalt blue, a deep red, a super luxuriously soft green, and of course, the tried and true black 
With all these fabrics, I plan to make basic crop tank tops like the one I'm wearing now, as well as long sleeve versions. And with the scraps, I want to try my hand at underwear, and I'll link the pattern that I'm planning to use down below. These next two fabrics are a super luxurious feeling lightweight twill. I picked up this black one and this amazing rust color. I have two patterns in mind. One is self-drafted, and the other is the Rose Cafe Bustier. Both of these will become dresses. I just haven't decided yet which color is going to be which dress. The dress that I self-drafted has some fit issues, but I really like the overall concept, so I'm I'm gonna try to make the final version of that. And then for the bustier, I wanna make a beautiful long dress like this one that Stephanie shared on Instagram. The next two fabrics are these gorgeous suitings. The first is a really nice cream color. And the second is this amazing dusty lavender. The grand plan is to make two pairs of wide leg trousers with two pleats and no elastic waist, as well as a button up vest. I want like a really nice matching set that can be kind of business casual, but also that's just my personal style. I really love tailored pieces. For the pattern, I'm thinking of using the Vicky is Daphna, but with that being said, I think I'm going to make a few adjustments. I want the pleats to go outward instead of inward, and I think I want slanted pockets instead of the well pockets. I don't have a pattern in mind for the vest, but I do have a vision of what I want. If you have any suggestions, please link them down below. The next material that I bought, I'm really excited for. The material itself isn't all that extravagant, but the pattern is something that I've been wanting to make for a long time. It's this really beautiful top from the factory sewing book that my baby sister got me for Christmas. The fabric that I chose is just a nice cotton poplin, and I think it'll hold the structure of the poofy sleeves really well. All the fabric here is going to be turned into shorts and pants. I plan to make Persephone pants and the new Helen jeans, which I'm super, super excited about. I think I'm going to make the Helen jean shorts out of this twill, and then if the pattern goes well, I'm going to use this denim to make the full leg pant. This next fabric is a beautiful canvas, and I kid you not, it was literally $4 a yard, and that doesn't even include the 20% discount I get for being a business. I was a bit skeptical to bring this color into my wardrobe because I don't have any other colors like it, but because the fabric was so inexpensive, I decided it'd be a good way to test out if this color works well in my wardrobe. The plan is to make them into Persephone pants. I also have this really lovely black canvas and I think it's going to become a pair of Helen jeans. If I have enough fabric it would also be really cool to do that big knee patch thing. I don't even know what you call it. I'll insert a picture so you know what I'm talking about, but I really love the idea of it, so maybe I'll test the waters with that. And then last of this material kind is this baby. This rust fabric is actually Carhartt material. It was $8 a yard and I bought four yards, and I plan to make a pair of Persephone pants and a matching chore coat. I also purchased one yard of this super simple white cotton, and I'm going to use that as the pockets for jeans. Then I've got some super thin padding that I'll use for the bust cups of the Rose Cafe Bustier, and I bought a ton of interfacing. I kind of go through interfacing really fast, and since I I have a lot of jeans and trousers planned, I decided it was a good idea to just stock up. The last bits are mostly notions. I got a lot of zippers for all the pants that I'm making, a bodkin which is great for pulling through elastic in a waistband, rivets and the tool to install rivets, lots of needles, two white serger threads, and lastly a small scrap of this really thick leather which was recommended to me by one of the ladies who works at the fabric store. She said that she uses a small piece of thick leather to hammer in the hardware on jeans so that it doesn't get damaged. Alright guys, that was everything in my last fabric haul from my local fabric store. It's a super bit sweet time, but regardless, I hope you learned something from this haul that'll help you be more intentional when bringing fabric into your home. We all deserve to make things that fit our personal style, and although there's a lot of trial and error involved with that, I think there are definitely actionable steps that we can take to better our odds of liking our makes. And hey, if you stuck around this long, it's probably because you like this video and you should subscribe.